Hello. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> if you're here, I'm so grateful. I'm happy that I have over 100 subscribers now. It feels good to resonate with apparent others and to share. So thank you again. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the channel and address a question that I got on my latest video about spiritual bypassing. I encourage you to let me know what you think about the channel. I feel led to share wisdom teachings um, because it was very comforting for me on the path. And I like to do it in a meditative way. It just gave me a chance to kind of let it sink in, you know, um, when I was listening on the path to these teachings. I also enjoy expressing my own opinions and telling little things that I've seen and learned along the way or unlearned. <laughs> And I know those are those are two different styles. And I would like to know what you think, which one you like the best. But I'll probably keep doing both just because. <laughs> I also wanted to say that it's easy to to sound as if I know something that you don't know. And I want to remind you that that is not true. It's just not. And even though I love reading these teachings by these, you know, masters, uh, I believe the true guru is within and without. and. It's this. It's more intimate than anything. And, you know, it's this, the true guru that's bringing these teachings and these inspirational, you know, synchronistic things to us playfully, you know, gently waking us up. And that's just my opinion, but. I try to speak articulately and calmly. You know, for the sake of sounding good and, and meditative and everything. I don't want you to think that I'm just this calm person all the time, you know. I'm a regular person, you know, and I, I just want to remind you of that, and I, that's why I like making videos um, with just me kind of riffing and talking. You know, this is therapeutic for me in a way. I get to practice being authentic, you know, and you know, the journey never stops deepening, apparently, it seems. So this is practice for me as well. This thing we like to call the ego, the identified uh, sense of self, it doesn't ever completely go away. It's it's just allowed. It's 
integrated, I guess you could say, with the absolute, with divinity or whatever word you want to use. It just merges into this not two-ness, this oneness, for lack of a better word. In this way, we are forced almost. I mean, I really can't think of a better word right now, but sort of forced into falling in love with this. Um, Maybe a better way to say it is it's just a natural process. But um, the humanity here, while we're here and alive, it's, it, it's always here. It's with us. And it just, it becomes deeply okay. And I like to say this because I, I didn't expect this at all when I was seeking. I thought that I would just become someone who was worthy of love. Somebody different. I didn't suspect that I would fall in love with what is, which includes this, that, this body mind and all its quirks and, <laughs> you know, everything that can arise um, in the mind and body. So it's just a good seed to put out there to for people to consider, you know, uh, maybe dropping the, the standards is, is a good idea. Maybe dropping the ideas about what this will be like when possible is, is good. It's grace when we're able to drop the concepts about what this is and rest in the unknown rest in what is which can be be anything it can appear as anything well thank you for listening to me ramble <laughs> this is sort of an unscripted uh, impromptu video I'm away from home right now, so I don't have my equipment, and I'm still learning, you know, the technology and everything, and anyway, I I got a lovely comment on my last video, a really good question (laughs) I'd like to address in different ways, and uh, just offer some different perspectives about it a commenter asked I don't want my negative feelings to be present using spirituality to deny them so how does one integrate them when the ego fears them First of all, uh, I want to humbly say that I don't know what others should do. There is no should for me. But I can tell you what helped me. I don't want my negative feelings to be present. To me, this desire that negative feelings should not be present, a preference for them not to be present. It can be questioned and inquired into and asked, should they not be present? Is there anything 
in my senses that are telling me that this should not be. In fact, if you if you really inquire and look, you'll see that when negative feelings arise and are present, everything in that instant is telling you that it should be because it is. And with a little grace and a little trust, and a little synchronicity, we can start to get the feeling that maybe this is arising to show me something. Not that we should make conclusions about what that is, but we can sometimes cultivate trust and Rest and be comforted by that, you know, when we, when we don't know what to do, which happens a lot on the path. Questioning our thoughts and assumptions on the deepest level not only can be really fun at times, but it can be a fertile ground for insight. And deepening. We really have sort of, to put it in a relative way, two choices when we have a feeling that we don't want to feel like fear. This listener said, when the ego feels fear, how to integrate the negative feelings. So in the moment when fear arises, we can just sort of see what happens. And what will, what will usually happen is we will either go to the conscious mind space, the space of fantasy and story, And I should be doing this, I should be doing that, not doing this, not doing that. Why can't I get it right? You know, a million different neurotic, uh, delusional, fantastical thoughts that are believed in, that we can follow like a thought train. And become very, very dissociated easily. It happens automatically because we're so deeply conditioned, many of us, most of us. (laughs) And we can watch when this happens. We can't always be conscious enough to, for it to seem as if we could avert away from it. And it's it's good to be reminded from time to time that when clear seeing dawns, it is seen that this isn't something that's controllable. Okay? And that's hard to hear because it doesn't give the person anything to do But the person has never had anything to do. They just pretended that they did as a survival mechanism. It's just believing in lies, concepts. And it's perfectly innocent. I can't stress this enough. This is natural. This is, you know, the apparent relative process of waking up and it it's not you know milk and honey all the time <laughs> uh, it can be utterly confusing and completely terrifying and it can feel like you can't handle it at times 
just like, you know, just like regular life can also feel that way. But I, dig- I digress. <laughs> Um, what can also happen besides uh, a dissociation, which can happen very easily if we're deeply conditioned to do so, if if we have grace enough to begin to cultivate an intuition that says, I can go into the body, and this this means it took me a while to understand this and to learn what this meant. You know, I would hear people say, go into the body. And I was like, what is, what does that even mean? Like, it just did not compute. But all it means is pretend that what you are aware of, that there's a flashlight of awareness. And when you are dissociated, that flashlight of awareness is pointed on all the fantasies and delusions that are trying to comfort you and pull you away from feeling emotions and sensations. But I promise you, and I'm here to tell you, that in this process, you cannot go around these emotions. You can't go around these uh, triggers that are sensational, that you can feel in your heart, in your gut. And all over, it could be anywhere, in your head, anywhere. You know, feeling like adrenaline or, you know, pure terror in the body. If these are avoided, if they continue to be avoided and not given space and not given the light of awareness and not felt, then we will be blessed with more suffering. And I don't I'm not I'm not being sarcastic. I mean it. It is a blessing. We will be given more suffering by ourselves as an opportunity to see to finally get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know. For desire to to get really, really single pointed, the longing, the longing for clarity. And when we are chasing conceptual knowledge constantly, and when we are telling ourselves that nobody is here, when when it certainly feels like that there's someone here. That's trying to force clear seeing and go around the emotions. Which seems like it it could be done, but uh, you learn hard and the hard way if you try to do it that way. (laughs) Uh, Which is fine, you know. Some we're stubborn sometimes and we need to we need to see it for ourselves. (laughs) I did, certainly. But um, I, I would say uh, the healthiest thing to do and the thing that would create a little bit more clarity or uh, space to cultivate more clarity is to, when you can, okay, when you can, it's practice, needs to be practiced, Drop the story. Just do it for one minute. As long as you can. If you have an opportunity. Go to the bathroom if you have to. Or say, I'll, I'll make time later to do this. The story that is ruminating in your mind about whatever drama it is. Just, just for a minute, just drop it. Drop it like a hot potato. <laughs> And and pretend that your your body is trying to tell you something in an energetic language, and the only way that you can hear it is to feel it. This is just a poetic way of saying what I'm trying to say, but drop the story, 
put the light of awareness into what it feels like to be terrified. And I promise you, when you face your fear, a whole new world will open up for you. Because this is direct experience. This is truth. It's not a convoluted fantasy in the mind. This is aliveness in in the body, outside the body. It just feels like a cloud of of sensations and, and you you may be surprised without the story. Things calm down really quickly uh, most of the time when you feel it. It's it's almost like your your body mind is it just wants to be heard, you know, or felt. It just wants a little bit of awareness, uh, you know, healing, healing awareness. It doesn't want to be rejected. It wants. It wants. I mean, I'm making it into a deity. I, I'm not meaning to do that, but you know, I'm just painting sort of a symbolic pic- picture here, but. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. And when you drop this story and you, you get a little bit better at, at being a little bit less, being a little bit less dissociated, a little bit more grounded in the body, you'll see that not only can you handle these emotions and sensations, there's nothing to be afraid of. In the in the sensation itself. Without the story, there's nothing that says it shouldn't be this way. Okay. So uh, I hope I explained that well. If not, I can... Um, try again later I guess (laughs) and thank you to the listener that asked this question and uh, let me know what you think about uh, my response (laughs) okay there is a second part to this question I'll read now It says, I have discovered that the same ego strategy used before non-dual awakening is being used now. And I'm going to say yes to that because we have no evidence that the ego will calm down or be be any other way than it than it has always been it's an automaton it's completely conditioned it's trying to survive the best it can this process is not about the ego changing or doing anything else than what it has always done This isn't about controlling the ego. Fighting the ego will perpetuate the ego. It'll give it strength. The light of your awareness will give it strength. Because it's 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 fishing for your awareness. It's throwing bait out there to see if you'll bite. But what this process is about is disidentification through clear seeing. And once once that happens, you see that it doesn't matter what the ego does or says. How it flails around and tries to get your attention. 
And when it is seen with compassion, when it is disidentified with, it loses a lot of that juice that it was given, being given before by your awareness. I have seen clearly that no one is here. And many, many insights came. And there was um, an intuition afterwards where I understood what many of the teachers were talking about when before I could not understand it to save my life. Now, understand is not the best word for this. I'm just going to say intuition. Because it's not conceptual, so, you know, language is tricky. But the ego, I'm using the term ego because the listener used that term. It will continue to try to get your attention. <laughs> there is no telling what will arise. There's, you never know what will arise. In the mind. But if you see clearly that it's not you, okay, and you're not even doing that, okay, clear seeing just arises. Nobody does it. It happens when it happens. You can't force it and you can't stop it. And that is seen very clearly <laughs> eventually. Uh, I'm going to continue to read this question. The ego uses spiritual teachings to keep me from feeling my feelings, my weaknesses, and vulnerabilities. The ego, at this point, is finding it difficult to embrace and allow the suppressed feelings and emotions from the past to be present. Look forward to the video. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, do not please sit around and wait for your ego to do anything that makes any sense. <laughs> um, your ego is a mechanism that is trying to keep this body mind alive in this world. That's all. It's literally not you. And b because it's not you, you don't control it. It doesn't know the world of intuition, and it doesn't know the world of feelings. It just wants to protect you from them because it doesn't understand them. All it can do is lie to you and make you avert your eyes away from the truth. Because it wants you to live and it wants you to survive. It's, it has no intelligence, actually. All it can do is mimic society innocently. It's not an entity, okay? And this is what is seen. Yes, you can see it with compassion. Um, see how the ego grasp, grasps and rejects and that that's all it can do and and that it's it's terrified in a way of of not having control anymore it thinks it thinks that you're going to die if you don't listen to it and and that's really just giving it too much power because like i said it's not an entity <laughs> it's like a, it's like a natural phenomenon like how a tree blooms and uh, the leaves fall off and uh, it's just a natural process. It doesn't mean that there's someone that is the doer of, of uh, the thoughts and the ideas and beliefs. That is another thought <laughs> that is uh, persistent and uh, we are deeply conditioned to uh, believe it to be truth. 
All right. Well, I love y'all and uh, I'm grateful for you. And hopefully I'll make another video soon. Let me know what you want to hear. Okay. Bye-bye.